a trend over the past couple of years in gaming is the bullet heaven genre, named for how it is the inverse of bullet hell, since you are the source of bullets dealing with swarms of enemies. It's usually also a format that borders between auto battlers and action roguelites with active movement, but passive attacks. Today, since they sent a press key, we get to look at the latest entry in the genre, Soul Survivors, which just entered into early access and touts itself as a more skill-based bullet heaven with distinct classes. And while it sits at a dollar less than Vampire Survivors, it does not get out of having to look at how it holds up to the competition in its current state. Is it just another clone, or does it actually iterate on the formula like it promises? And weirdly, my answer to both is, well, yes, sort of, each in its own way. This is because while it does include some mechanics that distinguish it from the inspiration, it's only marginally iterative basically existing in that weird middle ground where the differences would be easily seen in a sequential update to an already existing game in the genre. This is not a bad thing, but you do need to temper your expectations around it. The game also uses a more restrictive model due to the playstyles being heavily class-based rather than the more common model of giving all the starters access to all the weapons, in spite of having individual flavor. This means that the Warrior run will have drastically different options from the Necromancer run, and as the other classes are added, each of those will likely have a distinct style too. So I hope they do address some of the issues with the upcoming class archetypes, since this game does miss a couple marks in some respects, while putting many bullet heavens to shame in others. Weirdly though, for every pro the game has, I have to address a con. For example, the art style is really well done in terms of sprite-based titles that will be handling a lot of objects being tracked at once. The characters have a darker, more downtrodden world aesthetic that fits the intended theme, and there's plenty of visual distinction between each of the characters and enemy types when looked at in isolation, to make them look cool. The con on this though is the game falls into the brown trap when everything is on screen together. It's an issue a lot of first and third person shooters had for several years where the game becomes a mashing of shades of brown to note the oppressive overtone and give it a more grungy feel. This also has the downside of making it more of a pain to differentiate things on screen whenever it's busy, where most other bullet heavens have this issue due to contrast, and it's a very common issue, this one has it both due to contrast and color choices. So some waves will be exceptionally difficult to discern one group of enemies from another, or even the background, at least until you get to things that have more green and such in them. On the more active gameplay end, your actual attacks tend to play a bit more into proper aiming, with the Necromancer having a physics-based flail, for example, while some of the warrior's attacks require intentional targeting to your sides, and the enemies play to this too by having actual proper attacks instead of solely aimlessly walking towards you, at least some of them do, with some performing charges, others even doing range attacks of various types, and even an area of effect skill and summon is not uncommon. This means that attacks will be coming from a multitude of directions, which keeps you paying attention, though the game has an odd tendency to have really high preference for specific damage patterns for your character, unless you get lucky enough to get certain skills up to the higher levels where they do proper AoEs. More than once I had a run that went south because it only fed me attacks that were mostly short range and extremely horizontal on the warrior, or with the necromancer it has oddities like a skill that mostly hits a section near the bottom of the screen, making it hard to aim at actual threats. And the class specific skill system is its own double edged sword in this regard too. On one hand it gives you the classes that distinct flavor, but on the other hand it also robs you of a lot of snowballing effects that a good number of people play roguelites for. In Soul Survivors, you will likely never have a runaway instance, but rather just ones where you get your same old preferred skill earlier rather than later due to RNG, and you can get lucky with getting the right buffs for it. And I should probably add here, at least at this point, you never really unlock new skills to level up, but rather if you play a specific class enough you can unlock capstone skills for the character using gold, such as spinning blades on the warrior or a revival effect on the necromancer, as well as some perks at lower levels. Though I am kind of sad that you can only improve a character with the gold you find on that character, so you cannot just grind one up and then start unlocking the others, which basically means once you've maxed out a class, you cannot really use that extra gold on anything in subsequent runs. Main things I would love to see would be some opportunities for snowballing, even if difficult to achieve, and a little more in the way of influencing RNG during a run. 
since as it stands, the amount of times I've burned all three rerolls and gotten none of the useful skills, or in one case, no skills, just boring percent damage bumps, has been annoyingly frequent. Though that may just be due to my bad luck, but having the ability to accumulate more rerolls or even bans would be handy. Though if they did introduce bans, you would need to look at skill options and diversity. I would also love to see a bit more in the way of diverse attack patterns at lower skill levels, since I very often feel like I have to fight enemies on that horizontal plane I mentioned before, while they're free to come at me from all different angles, since I find it very uncommon to get a skill up past level 3 until easily into the character level 25 plus range, since I just can't seem to get them to consistently show up. This could be solved with a weighting of one slot towards a skill you already have, or potentially larger draw pools through upgrades, but for now this is where it stands, and with skills capping out at level 5, they will only get so strong even when you do get into later waves. In all this, it is worth noting, this is early access, it has two classes and two zones, and we will likely see some expansion on the formula it uses, and that's why critique like this is somewhat important to future development, and I hope they listen to feedback both on Steam and elsewhere online, since there is a lot of potential, though that can be said about pretty much every early access game. Now I would say, despite some of the negativity I have given this game during the video, for an early access game at this price point, it's not a bad deal, but it does need some work. And if you're looking for a more developed and unique experience, you may need to look elsewhere. But if you're looking for a game to capture more of the Vampire Survivor feel for cheap, then this might be right up your alley.